عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد All praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Peace and blessings be upon the Messenger of Allah In this video I would like to present the counter argument for those that say Sharia law for example is very barbaric when it comes to stealing barbaric when it talks about cutting off the hands of the thief. The first argument, the first counter argument that you say to somebody who's objecting to this law, you say to them, the first thing I would like to ask you is, are you planning on stealing anybody's money? And if they say no, of course I'm not planning on stealing, tell them they should not be concerned with what the punishment of stealing is, because this is a punishment. Meaning, I'm not inviting you to steal so that I can cut off your hand. Simply, this is the punishment. Meaning, if you steal, it applies to you. If you don't, then it doesn't apply to you. This is the first counter argument. The second counter argument is, this is the general ruling. Meaning, still, the judicial system in Islam, the judge, the Muslim judge under the Sharia, is able to listen to case by case and decide whether the judgment applies in this case, whether the ruling applies in this case. Okay? Let me give you an example, and which leads us to the third counter argument. And the third counter argument is under Sharia law, it does not allow anybody in the society to be poor. So, for example, if you apply the entire system of Sharia, there is mandatory charity given, collected from the rich people every year. Unlike countries like the United States, for example, in Western countries, where the, the, the minority, the 5% or 10% minority of rich people, they control 80% of the wealth. This is not true in Islam, and this is not the case. In Islam, the wealth is distributed very fairly to the hardworking people. They're able to earn good money, but you take a very small percentage of them every year that goes to the poor people that are unfortunate. People that are unfortunate, meaning for some reason they were not able to work. For some reason they were not able to work and provide for themselves. So if you apply the entire system of Sharia, you have mandatory zakat every year, you have voluntary charity, so you have mandatory charity, you have voluntary charity, and you have taxes, you have mandatory expenses for the society, and the government collects these expenses from you and distributes over the poor people. So, the system of Sharia does not leave room for poverty at all. And if it does, if one person skips through the cracks or slips through, through the cracks and ends up becoming so poor that they have to steal to eat, the punishment of cutting off the hand does not apply to this person. The evidence is during the time of Omar, one of the caliphs in Islam, somebody was stealing to eat and he did not apply the punishment to them. He said the punishment does not apply to this person. He is so poor, he needs to eat. Preserving human life has a higher priority in Islam. So who does the punishment apply to? If the system of Sharia is applied on any society, the only people that will be stealing will be people stealing not because of the need, but because of the want, because of greed, because they're greedy. They have more than enough, they have more than what they need, and they have more than what they have earned, but they just want more unlawfully. So, like a bank robber, like a fraud person, like a business person who goes and invents a fraudulent scheme to steal people's money and become rich and then file for bankruptcy. There are many, many, many examples in the Western world of big tycoons and business moguls who file for bankruptcy after they steal money from credit card companies and from other unfortunate people. So these are the only people that will be given room to steal under Sharia and people that are jealous. So somebody sees their neighbor and they have something that they don't have and they want to go steal from their neighbor. And again, the final argument and the final destructive argument is how many people die every year because of crimes directly related to robbery. 
or theft. For example, armed robbery or, uh, uh, you know, a grab and run gone wrong or some robbery that went wrong and somebody ended up dying. If you look at the statistics in the FBI, the number is no less than 1,000. I'm going to take a very, very, very conservative number, a very conservative number, and I will say, let's say it's 500 cases of death that are directly related to robbery or theft every year. I'm not talking about the situations that lead to death. I'm not talking about the situation that lead to bad injuries. Okay, I'm talking about a direct result of a robbery gone wrong. And the number is no less than 500 every year. So in 23 years, 500 times 20, we're talking 10,000 cases about maybe 550, 150 more. So we're talking, let's say 10,000 cases in 23 years. During the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, under the application of Sharia, one person lost her hand because she stole something that wasn't hers. Because in Islam, you're allowed to ask for things you want. You're allowed to beg for money. You're allowed to go ask, say if you're unfortunate, or even if you want something and you can earn it, you're allowed to go ask but you're not allowed to take something that doesn't belong to you by force from somebody else. So one person in 23 years lost their hand. One person, one person, no deaths. Nobody died in 23 years. Nobody died because of theft. But in the United States, we're talking at least in the most conservative figures, 10,000. You have one person lost part of their body, no death and you have 10,000 people. So your entire system of laws in the country that preserves human rights and always saying the Human Rights Watch, the country that, that protects humans and the rights of people, you have 10,000 cases of death in 23 years versus no death at all because of the punishment of robbery and theft is very severe in Islam. So which system preserves life? which system preserves dignity, which system preserves property, it is definitely Islam. So if you're listening to this video and you listen to this argument, you can go ahead and submit to the will of God or become Muslim after this evidence. <coughs> you have no other way except to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I testify that there is no other God Except Allah and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Jazakumullah khairan ala husn istima'ikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you generously for listening. Wa subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.